Um, I'm going to um, use my five to seven minutes to uh, tell you about uh, social protection. And we have, we have three questions that have been put to us. Um, the first one is, uh, wh what is the kind of shift in uh, thinking um, around, around social protection? Uh, the second one is, uh, how, how we uh, explain the change in thinking around it? And then, uh, what are the main implications arising from that change? Now, in terms of the um, uh, in, in terms of the change itself, perhaps it might be useful to start not from thinking but from policy, because what um, what has happened in the last uh, 10, 15 years or so in many low and middle income countries is that have, countries have introduced or expanded large scale programs providing direct transfers to households in uh, in poverty. Uh, mainly in cash, but also in kind or a combination of them, with the purpose of addressing their poverty and vulnerability. Um, a few examples might help in sort of pinning this down. Um, um, the um, uh, um, Chinese government, for example, had a, a small social assistance program, um, mainly uh, addressed uh, to um, older people and people with disabilities in urban areas in China. By about um, 1999, 2000, that covered about 2.3 million um, um, uh, beneficiaries. The um, um, restructuring of state-owned enterprises generated larger-scale unemployment, so that this program expanded to address those particular sets of needs. By 2004, the program had 22.4 million uh, beneficiaries. And then it, was, it has been now extended to rural areas, so it will include probably another 46 million. Um, India has introduced a National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme in, in 2005 that now provides uh, 100 days employment on demand to around 58 million households uh, in India. Um, Brazil has a program called Bolsa Familia that provides transfers uh, to families on condition that children go to school and families attend um, health, um, um, primary health care, which covers around a quarter of the population, around 40 million, 40 million households. And the same can be said of uh, other countries too. South Africa has a child support grant introducing um, 2000, uh, sorry, 1998 which progressively has been extended to all children living in poor families, and that covers around 40 or 50 percent of children in, in the country. So the, the expansion of very large scale programs providing transfers to families in poverty with the objective of addressing their poverty is really what, what uh, is the most uh, visible sign of that change. Now, if we then go back to thinking, what is a change in thinking? I think if, if you go back to the 1990s or earlier, uh, in discussions of development and social protection, the focus was very much on protection rather than promotion. So for low-income countries, for example, the focus was on, on, on aid and particularly emergency assistance uh, to families in extreme poverty. But it, has, it, it was really focused on short-term provision uh, addressing very specific shortfalls in terms of food um, in, in particular. In middle income countries, um, Latin America and other countries in, in, in um, Southeast Asia, uh, the focus was on, on, on developing uh, social insurance uh, funds that carry mainly work is in formal employment, but didn't reach um, the majority of the population that work on an informal basis or so didn't have access to kind of formal or public employment. So the focus was very much on protection rather than promotion. I think perhaps if anything explains the change in thinking around social protection is the view that perhaps promotion is as, in, as important uh, as protection. And that if you, if you look at social protection uh, institutions with, with, a, with a more medium term, a, long, a longer term focus, then the issue is not really in providing short term help um, and support to mitigate poverty, but perhaps the challenge is to provide more sustainable, uh, medium-term provision that enables households in poverty to, to eventually uh, escape from, from poverty. So I think that, to me, is the, is the most significant change. I think poverty research has played a very important role in this. Uh, for example, um, um, we, we have uh, um, um, 
instruments that allows us to, to rank people according to their poverty uh, so that you don't have a, a binary identification of either people are poor or not poor, but you can actually have a, a more um, um, a fine uh, assessment of how poor people are. I think that this helped very much in terms of implementing programs. I think the, the, the issue of and, and, or the understanding of the fact that poverty is multidimensional is also important. The understanding that duration of poverty is important, which is something that I guess in high income countries um, was well known, but um, cannot kind of be transferred into the particular op operational way in which uh, policies are implemented. So I think, sorry. Two minutes, yeah, that's fine. Okay, what, how, how, how can we explain the change? And I think we got, um, I, I got three kind of main candidates. Democracy, democratization, um, the, uh, uh, the, the sustained growth that many economies in low and, income, and middle income countries have uh, experienced that has generated fiscal space for governments to address those particular demands. I think one point that is particularly important is the fact that uh, it's the accumulation of exclusion, uh, which up to the 2000 perhaps was began with democratization to be uh, to be um, an important aspect and priority of governments. Now, in terms of implications, and I have three, and I'll go I'll go through them very quickly. Uh, the first one is, is, is perhaps something that everyone around the, around, the around the table and in this room would be um, uh, perfectly aware of it, but it's very important. Governments have a responsibility for reducing poverty and eradicating poverty. And, and how you incorporate that responsibility into institutions, I think, is, is the implication and the challenge for the, for the future. Uh, the second thing is that to address uh, uh, and, and eradicate extreme poverty, you need institutions. You need to have much more of a medium-term focus rather than a short-term one. And, and finally, that uh, social protection is a, a, an essential component of an effective uh, development strategy. And I think those three are the main kind of challenges, but at the same time, the implications that we, we have to address in our future work. Many thanks.